Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams, and joining me on the summit today is the Southeastern Savage Storm football coach, Tyler Fenwick, as we are continuing our college football preview. We're getting ready for the fall 2021 season, and uh, quite frankly, I don't think it can get here quickly enough. We are about 12 weeks away from Southeastern's first football game of the season. It's going to be a Thursday night matchup. We'll talk about the Savage Storm schedule in just a moment. Coach, you had an opportunity to get to see your team. A couple of scrimmages, games, something like that. Something similar to football, which is what Southeastern hadn't had an opportunity to see since back in 2019. Tell me what you saw from your team in the spring as you got to uh, match up with, uh, excuse me, had a little bug on me there. Match, <laughs> I was a bit abrupt. Match up with uh, Midwestern State and with Northeastern. Yeah, um, you know, I think, you know, for to start with, I mean, it was just to get those guys out against somebody else. I mean, we had practiced um, in the fall against each other and, you know, and you practice against each other in the spring and, and you can only handle so much, you know, seeing the same thing and going against each other and getting those guys, um, you know, motivated to, to go out and do it again. And, and, you know, coaches love practice, but man, players need to play. And, and, um, and so it was just good to get those guys out and, uh, and see a different opponent. Um, it was good, you know, to kind of go through a week of, you know, game planning and, and actually putting it together and, and, uh, and trying to put together a game plan so that they knew how to execute and what to execute. They're going to see something different and, and challenges and all that stuff. And, and, um, I thought they handled it really well. I thought, um, I thought, uh, uh, going against Midwestern state, I thought early on, we made some, you know, some mistakes that, um, were mistakes that were critical to the growth of our of our program. Um, you know, uh, just some unsportsmanlike penalties and some things that kind of put us in some bad situations. And once we kind of settled down um, that second half, it, it was like everything started to kind of come together and you kind of felt like, OK, you know, we're back out here. We got all that, you know, junk out of the way and let's just go play football. And, and um, you know, and then, you know, we were able to offensively in the third quarter, we were able to drive the ball a couple of times and put the ball in the end zone. Um, I thought, uh, I thought defensively, I thought we played really, really well. Um, you know, we, we, we did a really good job of stopping the run. We did a really good job for the most part, covering, um, people down the field. Uh, they got a couple, um, big plays on us that were covered really well. That was kind of one of those things where it was like, you know, great, great play by their guy. Um, <laughs> you know, great coverage by our guy and a guy just made a play. So, uh, we had a couple, uh, I think third and one you know, stops. We had a goal line stand, um, you know, so there was just a lot of things that we showed um, in that, 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 uh, that showed improvement um, from where we were a year ago in 2019 and some of the things that, you know, we knew we had to fix. And I think even, you know, just that game through the course of this, the, whatever it was, 60 minutes and I think that we had an overtime period, I, there was growth in just that one game where we made some strides. And then, um, and then, uh, you know, Northeastern was the week after that and, uh, you know, f felt like they were a lot more comfortable. They felt like they were a lot more um, in sync uh, in a sense and, and uh, you know, communicating well and playing together well. And um, we didn't have any, any of those unsportsmanlike, you know, situations. We were, um, you know, a lot cleaner, um, you know, as it, as it went through. So um, and that's what, you know, that's really what the goal was um, going into the off season was how can we take, you know, what we learned from 2019 and um, apply it and learn from it and, you know, make sure that we, uh, that we improve on those things. Coach, the Savage Storm 1-10 in, in 2019, that was your first year with the program as, as you've come in and, and taken the reins. So uh, really kind of uh, the COVID year being what it is, uh, you're looking to see your second full season then with the uh, with the Southeastern football program here in 2021. I know it's the third year on paper, but uh, we'll, we'll call it the, the second full yeah. year as we're looking at it. Uh, you look at the offense then, and, and what kind of adjustments then uh, are, are you looking at for this offense? I, I, you got some good play from uh, a number of players, including Braxton Kincaid, who's going to be a junior on the team this year. Six touchdowns from him from that wide receiver spot and more than 700 yards receiving. Oh, is that one of the places where you can look and go, okay, we can start building here? Yeah, no, there's no doubt. Braxton has, uh, you know, since I've been here, Braxton has really grown up in so many different ways. Um, he's a phenomenal football player. He's 
he's his his football IQ is off the charts. Um, you know, he can play outside receiver for us. He can play inside receiver for us. We can line him up as a tight end if we want to, um, and do some things there that, that you know. And so he's he's so valuable. Um, he thinks he can play quarterback, um, but you know we have that uh, argument all the time. But anyway, uh, you know so. Um, but he's a guy that the quarterbacks can rely on. And, and, uh, and I think that it helps that, you know, I think our receiving core as a whole is very strong. I think, um, you know, Cottrell Blakely and uh, uh, Deuce Pittman, um, Skylo, um, all those guys are back. And, and then Hunter Hawthorne is coming along and, and he's shown some good signs. So I think he's surrounded by some really, um, you know, good talent around him. And I think that um, helps all of our receivers because you can't just, focus on Braxton and say, we're going to take Braxton away because now we've got these other weapons that we um, can get the ball to. And so it, it kind of balances out the defense a little bit, um, you know, so, so yeah, he, he's a, he's, we're, we're extremely excited about his development. Um, you know, he's become um, just, a, a, you know, I think early on in his career, I think the weight room was just kind of another room and, and he had to go do it. But now I think he understands he's really grown to understand the importance of the weight room. He's gotten stronger. He's gotten faster. Um, and, and, and honestly, academically, he's taken the classroom a lot more seriously and he's uh, he's got goals and he's going to graduate, uh, you know, early um, and, um, you know, and, and probably start his master's at some point before he gets done playing. So um, I think just as a whole, I think he's really uh, matured um, in the last, you know, the two years that we've been here. We're speaking now with Tyler Fenwick, the head football coach at Southeastern. And and I promise on these broadcasts, I don't always get spooked by my own headphone wire. So uh, that's neither here nor there. Please do subscribe to the channel and find out Midwest Sports Net. <laughs> we would appreciate that greatly. As we talk about Southeastern football now, uh, coming into this season, uh, we mentioned the one in 10 record, but the, yeah. one of the numbers that stands out to me, though, from, from the the stats from 2019 was on the defensive side, giving up a little bit more than 30 points per game. And I know that uh, obviously is is something that you all have addressed then heading into the 2021 season. Talk about what uh, the defense looks like. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, the defense, when we look back and, and you know, I think anytime you have an issue, you, sit, you have to sit back and say, okay, what are the issues and how do we address them and how do we find the solution to, to fix the problems? And, and um, you know, I don't, I don't know that uh, I think part of the problem was the fact that we, it seemed like we had a new lineup every week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were playing a lot of young guys and, and, uh, and so, you know, just schematically, we weren't able to um, advance throughout the season. It was kind of always, you know, our base stuff. And, and we just kind of, you know, kept installing. And all of a sudden you have a new linebacker starting that week. And, you know, he's a redshirt freshman and he's trying to figure it out. And, you know, and, and so we didn't want to throw too much at him. Um, and then I think, you know, you look back and you sit there and you say, well, you know, all these none of these guys have really played college football, um, you know, other than a few of them. Um, and, 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 you know, I think our, our defensive line last year in 2019 was probably the the strength of the of the uh, of the defense. And, I you know, we did a pretty good job of stopping the run. But, you know, when, and you really look at, you know, most of those games through three quarters, um, you know, we were playing really good defense. We were, you know, we were in close games. We were in tight games. And and I think we kind of wore down in the fourth quarter. And and that's lack of depth that we had. And I think, um, you know, just the, the youth that we had. And so, um, you know, we didn't panic and we're not going to sit there and say, well, we need to get rid of everybody. We just need to continue to develop these guys because we have good players in our program. Um, you know, and I think you look at, you know, where we're at now. Um, you know, guys like Josh Malumba uh, is back, who's an all-conference guy. You got um, Jalen Freeman, who is uh, who, who can play anywhere on the field. Uh, he can play. Uh, he's playing safety. We can put him at corner. We can put him at outside linebacker. We've actually lined him up at inside linebacker in, in certain situations. So, um, you know, the guy's all over the field. Um, you know, we built some depth at, at corner um, with bringing in Keyshawn Somerville as a transfer from TCU. Um, and then you still got Jeremiah Balltrip and you got – um, you got, uh, uh, Keelan Chilton. And, and so there's just, um, there's just a lot more experience that we've got now. And I think honestly, these scrimmages that we've had, uh, with Midwestern and Northeastern and Emporia, um, is invaluable, uh, for those guys to just get on the same page. We've advanced our defense just as far as having, you know, just a lot more, um, answers, um, you know, when, when, 
um, when schemes arise that, you know, we need to make an adjustment, we can make those adjustments down. Our kids can make those adjustments. Um, you know, so, uh, our linebacking core is, is, you know, extremely deep now, you know, we went from basically playing a bunch of redshirt freshmen last year with Cam Tate and Scooter Baker and, and all that. And obviously, you know, Swope in there, you know, Swope had gotten hurt. And, um, so there's just a lot more depth. Um, and, and, you know, with depth, it, it brings a lot more competition, um, to the practice field. And those guys are really right. battling to, to win the job. So, um, Caleb High is a kid that we brought in who's, um, you know, probably 225 pounds, 230 pounds, and he's, you know, muscle, he's a linebacker. So that's another guy that just you throw in the mix. And, um, you know, and when you have that depth, you know, as well, that that's going to carry on to your special teams. You know, you got more guys that you can play on special teams and stay fresh and, and, uh, and carry it into the fourth quarter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I, I feel good. I think, you know, I don't know that really any, any of those teams, um, that we played, um, you know, ran the ball on us uh, all that well. And I, I know, you know, from our standpoint, going against our defense every day in practice, uh, it's not easy running the football. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I feel good about where we're at. I feel good about where our staff's at. Um, Coach Johnson's done a great job in, in his career with, uh, um, you know, putting great defenses. And, and you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, I mean, I've, I've been a lot, a part of a lot of um, playoff teams and, and, conference championship teams and and the one thing that I think is the common denominator of all of them is all those teams have had great defenses and and um you know we're, we're going to get to that point coach I just uh and, and not to to stay on the topic too long but I, I appreciate what you've said you know about the, the players themselves okay we, we don't need to just throw everybody out it's the experience then yeah. that they've gotten and and that will help them become uh, better players I mean how everyone gets the extra year. And, and I know that that's one of those things at this point, I'm looking at classifications as just, it's just nominal. It really is. It's tough to know. I mean, you have to know who, what the roster is going to look like uh, as a broadcaster, because it could be anybody coming back, but yeah. uh, you know, that experience from one year to the next on the college level, I mean, you, you're uh, addressing it and, and you know, it, it, it's a big deal to, to be able to just have even that one more year of experience. How big is it then to be, an upperclassman and to have a group of upperclassmen that you get to, to trot out there on the field on Saturdays. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you feel good about who, you, you know, who you're putting out there, you know, you know who these guys are and, 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 you know, in 2019, we were figuring out these guys just as they were figuring out us as we were going through the, you know, the, the week to week battles and, and, uh, and who can handle adversity and who can't and, and uh, you know, how are we going to handle losing and who's going to bounce back and who's going to give up and, you know, and, 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 you know, just we're, we're, there's a process of, um, you know, trying to put together the, the, the right roster um, to win championships. And, um, you know, going back, you know, just, you know, experience, I've always said there's no substitute for experience. I mean, you're just a much better football player, the more, you know, real game snaps that you play. Um, and, and, you know, you talk about building depth and, you know, we brought in all these freshmen. Um, and so, you know, one of the big things that we needed to address was, um, the secondary, um, as far as depth, um, I mean, I think our force, you know, our four, uh, Jay free and Malumba and, um, uh, Chilton and ball trip. I mean, those guys played just about every snap last year. Um, you know, we had, uh, you know, KB was able to get in there a little bit and, and, and do some things situationally and, and, uh, and, and Micah Rogers, but, I mean, those guys, I mean, they played every snap um, throughout the year. And so um, now we've had a chance to um, bring in guys like uh, Jalen Shaw, who's a, a freshman, and, um, um, you know, and, and get those guys, you know, meaningful game reps. Caleb Tobias, you know, we threw in there, and, and they were able to get scrimmage reps and, and build that depth rather than those guys just all of a sudden – you know, game one, Arkansas Tech, here you go. Uh, <laughs> here's college football for you, you know. So yeah. um, as much as as much as we hate the fact that we weren't able to play in games, um, you know, in the fall and in 2020 and, and um, you know, try to get out there and, and get that one in 10 taste out of our mouth. I mean, that's the hardest thing I think that I've, you know, that I, I deal with is, you know, waking up every morning and, you know, for two years now we've been one in 10. 
<laughs> um, you know, and, and yeah. so you want to, <laughs> you always feel like you're only as good as your last season. So, um, but you know, so that's been hard, but you know, when you look at the bright side and you look at the positives, I think our program and where we're at, um, coming off of that year, this, you know, this, you know, can help us and it can be an advantage for us to continue to develop and, and, uh, and get those guys some meaningful game reps, um, you know, against another opponent when the lights are on and the fans are in the stands and the officials are out there. And, uh, and, and on the other side of the ball, I mean, the offensive line, I mean, it's kind of been the same way. We've, uh, pretty much had to, you know, rebuild the offensive line, you know, where we've got, now we've got James Walker playing, uh, who's a transfer. We got, um, Daquan Montgomery. That's, that's a transfer. We've got Dylan Yandel. That's a transfer. Um, and then, you know, not to mention, um, uh, Devin Mitchell, who played offensive line half of the season last year in 2019, because we had moved him over from playing defensive line. And so, you know, he's able to be able to get, you know, those reps and, um, you know, trying to Caleb, uh, uh, Weatherford is a transfer, um, who's played a lot of football at the division three level, but, you know, he got a chance to play against, uh, you know, some division two, really good division two competition to, and, 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 you know, you know how it is with the offensive line, those guys, you know, they got a lot to think about. There's a lot of calls that they have to make. They all five got to be on the same page. And, mm-hmm. um, and so, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, to, to get those guys in the mix and, and working with, you know, guys like, um, Granger, uh, that, that started every game for us last year. And, um, and, uh, you know, just to be able to, uh, to work together as a unit, um, I think was, you know, just value, you know, extremely valuable for us. Um, and so we're looking forward, you know, obviously to, you know, the fall and, and to get back out there and to show everybody that, you know, that we're a different team, that we're a more mature and more experienced team, um, and kind of get that, uh, you know, get that taste out of our mouth that we can, we can go, you know, compete at this, in this conference. Well, coach, then I, I appreciate that. And I, and I understand that feeling and, and it's going to be O and O here. I, I don't know what, yeah. what the deadline is in the summer where you start thinking, you know, it's, it's everybody's O and O, but we'll give it to you right now. 12 weeks out though. <laughs> The, the next game on yeah. the schedule, you mentioned Arkansas Tech. It's a Thursday night. You traveled to Russellville to take on the Wonder Boys and then the first home game of the season for Savage Storm fans. They'll get a chance to see you the very next weekend as you take on Harding. Uh, both programs, solid programs. You get the 2021 schedule underway. What do you see as the the new year comes about? I guess the, the best thing is that O and O and you get to start all over again. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you do get to start all over again. Um, you know, and you get to roll out a new, new team and, and, uh, you know, see where we're at. And uh, I, I think, you know, the, uh, I mean, you look at the schedule and you sit there and you go, man, I mean, you know, there are no non-conference games. And so you got to have, you know, you got to be on your A game uh, from game one and, you know, on the road at Arkansas tech, I think Arkansas tech is honestly probably uh, in a similar, you know, boat that we are, you know, new staff uh, in 19 and, and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, same thing with their roster and make it their roster and, and bring in, you know, guys that fit their their philosophy and, and all that. And, and uh, so, you know, I think um, I think it's going there, I think is tough. I think they got a nice venue. And and, uh, you know, when we played them, they 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 played really well. And and um, and we didn't. <laughs> so, it, you know, we, we've got some things to prove and we got, you know, to make sure that, you uh, you know, we got to make sure, you know, when I go back and look at that game and I've watched that game a bunch lately and, and, uh, and we kind of, we kind of started in on some, a little bit of game plan at the end of the of spring, um, knowing that that was our first game. And, and, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that we needed to clean up. And, and, uh, and I think that, uh, our guys are hungry just to get out and play again. And, uh, I think it'll be a good matchup. I think it's, like I said, I think there's a lot of parity in the two, in the two, programs right now just as far as you know where we're at um you know being our first year or second year and their second year and and uh, and going through that so um you know our guys are excited about it um i think our uh, they, they've been working hard and uh you know i think our quarterback um dalton hatley i think is is um you know going to be one of the should be one of the top quarterbacks in the conference just the way i've you know that i've seen him develop and lead and um you know and kind of take this offense um by the horns and and uh, and run with it and i think that uh you know he he played against um arkansas tech he played pretty well 
um, for the most part. He made some good throws, made some good decisions. Um, you know, so I'd like to see him, you know, just kind of take that next step and capitalize on it and and uh, and get these guys going and, and be ready to play. I think, you know, and then all of a sudden you got to, you know, game two, you know, talk about the schedule. You got to go against Harding and uh, you got to be ready for that that flex bone. And and so we've we've you know been working on on that stuff and and uh, trying to get ahead, you know, while we have time. And we did some things in the off season that to prepare us because that's just one of those, it's one of those offenses that you, it, it's, you know, you can't just say, okay, you know, here we are game week and, and, you know, make all your adjustments. And, and, uh, and so you got to have a plan, you know, going, going into it. And um, so that you can, you know, when it is that Harding week, when it is that Harding week, you're able to, um, uh, you know, pull it out of the Rolodex and say, okay, here we go. This is, this is, uh, this is, this is, here's the plan. And, and we, you know, remember when we worked on this and we're bringing it back now for this week. I think for any team to play Harding, the, the uh, earlier in the schedule it is, the better because you get some more time during the summer to prepare for that uh, for that Harding offense. But the Southeastern Savage Storm getting ready for the season again. And it's 12 weeks from today, so it's a Thursday night matchup when you all uh, head to Russellville to take on Arkansas Tech. Coach Tyler Fenwick, thank you so much for taking some time to preview the 21 season and, and visit with us today here on Midwest Sports Net and success to the storm. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. And, you know, it's always exciting to talk about our, our players and, and our program and all that stuff. And, you know, and honestly, I mean, I feel like we've been talking about these guys for two years now and, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's about time we roll them out there and, and, and let them go. Uh, you know, so it's coming up. I think the summer is going to go by pretty quick. And, um, you know, I know that there's a lot of excitement around town and it seems like um, everybody's ready to, to get back and, and, and watch some football and, and, uh, and get out and, and get to the games and all that stuff. So um, we'll, we'll be ready.